Oftentimes when people make New Year's resolutions, by the time they get a month or two months in, they've already blown it. They think they can't start again until the next January. I don't think that's the case. We currently have six months left in 2023. I know, hard to believe, very cliche to say so. My personal opinion though is that you can make certain decisions right now that can make sure that you end the year with more money in your bank account than you currently have. There are some things that you can put in place to change your financial life within the next six months. I'm gonna talk about them in this video. So we're gonna talk about four things that you can do. The first one is to identify the people, things, and ideas that you value, what you hold dear. Make a list, whatever they are. Don't think about it as far as judging what you write down. Write down what you truly feel in your heart. To help get you started, I'm going to tell you what mine are. Time with family. I, my family is my world, my husband and my daughter. Creative pursuits. I am a creative person. That's part of the reason why I make videos on YouTube. I, I love the creative part of it. My relationship with God, which gosh, over the last five years has just grown into something I, you know, it's just one of those things that's turned my life. Uh, becoming 1% better each day, you know, working to achieve whatever my soul's path is, what I feel called to do. And the goal of being financially free, mortgage free, able, this would be fun. I, I saw this saying somewhere, able to work where I want, when I want, and with whom I want. Those are the things I value. So what I try to do is to ensure how I spend my time, the actions that I take, and how I spend my money get me closer to those things that I value, those things, those, play, those people, and those ideas that I value. Write yours down, okay? And then evaluate if your current actions, your spending, the, the, how you spend your time, is helping or hindering you from being aligned with those values. Number two, decide to spend the next six months filling your head with financial content. And I'm talking books, blogs, podcasts, YouTube videos. You already started, you're watching this, so you're already there. Let's push it up even further. Now, some of what you watch or read or hear will be great. Some of it won't. Some of it won't be for you. Just like some things on my, con my channel might not be for you, but the me next thing might be. Some of it will feel repetitive, but some of it will light a fire underneath your hiney. You won't know which is which until you've, you've gone through it. And then you, when that, that fire hits, you're like, oh, this is what I needed. So some things, to, some places to get started if you're, you're really trying to, or just getting into this financial world and understanding money. The book I highly, highly recommend, especially to people who might be emotional spenders or spendy like I, I, like I am naturally, Love Your Life, Not Theirs by Rachel Cruz. Fantastic read. I've read it two or three times. I have tons of videos on my channel that you can check out. You can also check out other YouTubers. Kate Caden is one that I just love her personality. She's so much fun. K-A-T-E-K-A-D-E-N. If you haven't checked her out, make sure you do. The third one is you're going to set small goals for the next six months. Small goals, okay? Maybe you don't normally set goals. Start small. Setting small goals, net goals now, what will happen is, let's say you get close to reaching that goal when December rolls around. You were really close or, or you got to the goal and, and it was easier than you thought or heck, maybe you exceeded that goal. What that's going to do is going to, it's going to set you up for starting 2024, ready to set further, bigger goals, more small, uh, short-term goals, more mid-term goals, huge long-term goals. Let's get your mind thinking about this. I'm going to give you some examples just to get you going. So examples of small goals that you could put into place to achieve within the next six months. All of it you know, can just mold these to fit your life situation. 
One could be maybe you pay off one or two credit cards with the lowest balance. A two might be reducing your weekly grocery budget by $20. So instead of spending maybe $140, you'll combine all of the frugal grocery shopping knowledge you can find. I'll link a video all about grocery shopping hacks at the end of this one. So check that one out and you'll, you'll try to save $20 so you not don't exceed $120. Another one might be that you want to not put holiday purchases on a credit card this year. You want to start saving now for Christmas or the holiday season. Let's say you want to spend $500. So you decide your goal is to save $84 a month for the next six months. Or maybe you're going to decide to do no spend weekends once a month. This is an awesome way to get jump started and it's only two days, but make it repetitive every month. This one's great if you combine it with any of the other goals that we mentioned above, but it will help you reach those financial goals quicker. The last part here, number four, to put into place to make the next six months the most financially successful. If you've you know gotten through the first six months and you've gone, I haven't reached my goals. Let's rewind. Let's put these four things in place. Make a plan for your money. Now, of course, you can call it a budget if you want to. That's what most people call it. But sometimes that just has a negative connotation if you've heard all these budgeting things and it stresses you out to think about it. So call it a plan. There are hundreds, and this might be part of the reason that you get stressed out, but there are hundreds of videos, blog, co blog posts, methods of budgeting. I'm going to tell you, here's a high level of how to do it. I was never taught about how to do properly a budget in school or in life. And I didn't do my first budget until I was probably, I think in my late twenties. So it's okay. I've broken it down here in three simple steps. It's, it just take the, the, the scary part out of it and the hard part. I actually really like doing it now. And I do it as part of my job as well. I, I, I really exciting. I know exciting stuff when you work in Excel spreadsheets. Anyway, the first part is here. You want to list your income. Oh, that's pretty easy to figure out how much money comes in, right? Then you're going to figure out what your typical expenses are. You'll take maybe three months of bank statements, credit card statements, print them out, sit down, look at them. You'll know which items are your fixed items, meaning your rent or your mortgage, your car payment, your insurance. They're always the same every single month. Then you may decide to sit here and figure out how much gas. So how many times I will go to the gas station. I went to the gas station X amount. It averages about 150 to 160 a month. Okay. Well, then, you know, when you do your budget, you can budget for about $160 a month and continue on from there for your typical expenses, groceries, etc. Then what you're going to do is put together your budget. You've got your income and you've got your expenses and what you're going to do after you have determined all of that for your budget is tracking for your budget because if you put those numbers together and you don't go back and reconcile them you wasted your time so what you basically need to do is write down every single expense keep a little notebook with you or use your google notes app to write down everything you spend if you've ever had an allergic reaction to something you eat or food and you have had to narrow down what it is, maybe you've had to keep a food journal and write down every single thing you ate to see what it, when it corresponds with the allergic reaction you have. Same thing with your money. You have to write down everything you spend so you can find those problem areas and tackle them. Now, after you've done that, you're going to realize a couple of things. At the end of the first month, which the first month's gonna look a little crazy, you might just actually see that you're overspending. And in that case, got a couple options. You can decrease your expenses, increase your income, or both here. But something's got to give. You can't continue to live and spend more than you're making. What you also need to remember here is when you've got your income and your expenses, if there is a gap, if there's a certain amount of money left over, then what are you going to do with that? Are you going to put that towards savings? Are you going to put that towards your goals? Take that money and realize, oh, this is discretionary income. What can I do with this? Oh my goodness, look, I can put this amount towards my car payment. Let me average this out real quick. I can have my car paid off in six months. 
there is no telling what you could find if you dig down and actually do this budget. A side note here is to realize too that it's gonna take a few months of trial and error to get the budget on track, to figure out where your expenses are in, in different seasons, and it's all going to change. Just kind of roll with it and don't beat yourself up if you, you go over in one area because maybe you'll be under budget in another. If you are really trying to make headway in your financial goals and you put these four things into place, maybe you've already put a budget into place, but you haven't thought about setting smaller goals for the rest of the year or vice versa. If you can take any of these and put them in place for the next six months, just imagine where you could be by the time December rolls around because you know, we could blink and it will be here. Don't waste another six months. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you back for more videos.